Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys. So I wanted to come on here and report on the whole Monice, Jess Hilarious, April Jones, and Little Fizz saga, okay? This entire situation is messy as hell. So if you guys don't know, the premiere of Love & Hip Hop Hollywood happened, um, I believe, last week. It premiered last week, Monday, and I did catch it. April doing it. It ain't gonna work. Mark my words, this delusional sister wife tour is not happening. Y'all gonna kill this show. No, we're not. April, this is I a disaster. I don't think disaster. it is because me and Monice have never, ever had an issue. Ever. Wait, is she gonna have an issue when she know that you kiss Fizz? And the first episode was very, very interesting. Um, and you saw the dynamic between Monice and April. And Monice was really upset with how she was being portrayed. She's saying that Love and Hip Hop's editors are making her look like she's jealous of April and Fizz. Like she's thirsty trying to be April's friend. So she basically told them that they need to fix it by episode two. If not, she's going to drop um, audio of somebody basically co-signing how bad of a person April is. So, of course, Love & Hip Hop producers, you know, promptly ignored her ass and told her to, you know, go fry fish elsewhere. We don't care about your rants and complaints on social media. So, Monice then decided to basically air out Jess Hilarious. So, what happened is that Jess Hilarious, basically being miserable and messy, she decided to reach out to Monice and she starts sending Monice all these voice memos, okay? She called her all types of hoes. She accused April of doing drugs, says she has sex with all types of guys, don't even know their name. And then she she kisses her babies on the mouth I mean it was a mess and then they also were saying that you know this is not the first time little Fizz has done this to Omarion he's stolen other girls that Omarion used to date so that's why you know um Omarion just does not deal with little Fizz so I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys the video of Monice talking about everything and her also exposing what Jess Hilarious had to say about April Jones y'all check this out I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary girl was in the feelings like that about me like I'm her bitch or something no we was friends the fuck then in the conversation, you want to tell me, and it's just fucked up because you know a lot of things about us that don't nobody know. We let you in on, you know, this a secret. And when the fuck did y'all think it was a secret, my nigga? Everybody know y'all fucking and around. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. And, and you want a bitch who on live talking about everybody ran up in her pussy and shit. Get the fuck out of here. And then as sad as that shit look, you feel me? Like. This is the person you fighting for, Drew. Like, that's some clown shit, nigga. You, she a fucking lost cause. The bitch is wild. All, on all types of fucking drugs. Fucking niggas can't even remember the next day and shit. Keep kissing our kids in the mouth. When you get the fuck out of here, bitch. I'll put you out there. Yeah, bitch, for real. I'm talking about when I was living in L.A., you know, when I was out there staying out there, you know, to shoot the sitcom, this bitch will go out every night. Guess who the fuck will have her kids? Your baby father. He had our kids more than she did. The fuck? But you, every every opportunity you get, you bashing Omarion. This nigga ain't say nothing to you yet. Nothing about you yet. You look so fucking stupid. And this is the bitch you want to be with, Fizz. You stupid, nigga. She done already told your dumb ass. Like, April told Drew one night she was fucking with ASAP. You know, she was thirsty for this nigga, too. She told Drew... He's my prototype. Like, you can't get, you know what I'm saying? This is who I want to be with. This is my prototype. This sitting there looking dumb as shit. Ain't say nothing. So, oh, this, this the nigga you like, this nigga. Why are you putting up with this shit for one of your band members, baby mothers, nigga? You stupid or no? The fuck? And ASAP Planner gonna have her come to the, keep having her come to the studio when he got a hella of other bitches at. And she's sitting there, really, really sitting there instead of leaving. I wish the fuck. A nigga would tell me come to the fucking studio and he there with other bitches. Fuck this Ray B. A orgy? Exactly, bitch. And you stupid. Then this bitch really broke down. Broke down months, little well, weeks later at the she saying a um at the she saying a fucking um interview that ASAP did where he said he had a girlfriend. I'm the first person she called. Bitch, he got a girlfriend. Da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, all right. All right, the fuck? What you thought you was going to be? And then she got Drew dumbass tucked off for when it don't work out with other niggas and shit. And he just there playing with his head and shit. The fuck is wrong with you? Watching her kids and shit. Doing everything for her. Fuck out of here, nigga.
Now, the next time a bitch wants to talk shit about me, watch yourself. Watch yourself is all I'm going to say. All I said was, come on, my nigga. I know you're not defending the bullshit. That's all I said. And that was why I said it. Like I said, I know bitches make up, break up. It happens, right? But then I hear that they're on live dogging me. What do I do? What did I do? All I said was based off of our last interaction, it feels a little weird. Now when I say there's a lot that I don't fucking say, there's a lot that I know that I don't say, Nigga, y'all have no idea. There's a lot that I know that I don't say. And I'm telling everybody right now, stop fucking playing with me. Because I don't just say, I say with proof. I say with facts. I say with receipts. You keep on disrespecting me and I will ruin you. I won't think blink twice about it, my nigga. Understand that. And one of these days, niggas gotta see me. You gotta see me one day off this camera. And when you see me off this camera, keep that same energy. At all times, walk around with your guard up at all times. So I'm saying it right now. Keep your guard up. Because if I see you off camera, it's not going to be, I'm not pulling up. I'm not going looking for niggas. What I'm saying is, you will see me. And I'm not talking about Jess. I'm talking about the flunky. Bitch will see me off this camera. And when you see me off this camera, remember that you said it was on site. Remember that that's not how that scene went, my nigga. We reshot a scene. I told the producers to send you in on the bullshit because I don't have to say anything. I don't have to do anything. I've been letting y'all niggas dig your own grave from day one. From day one, y'all niggas been, but what you won't do is bury me with you. I will dig my way out the grave with nothing but truth, with nothing but facts. And when I get to digging my way out and I'm throwing the fucking truth, I'm flinging that shit off the shovel, be ready. Have on your rain boots, bitch. Have on your poncho. Go get your cowboy hat, get your gloves, and get some disinfectant. Because we can go toe to toe. Niggas don't want to play this game with me. And I've been trying so hard to just be cool, calm, collected, copacetic, amicable. I've been trying, trying. But what you're not going to do is play with me or play me or insult my intelligence. I don't let this bitch run all season telling me a lie. Because quite frankly, who you fuck is none of my business, even if it is my baby daddy. My son didn't come home, you know what I'm saying, bruised up because of her. My son came home bruised up because of his father. So, bitch, my issue is not with you, it's with him. Now, mind your motherfucking monkey ass, funky ass business, bitch. March your ass on down to the fucking courthouse and deal with your own shit. Because in a minute, you won't have any business to mind. Yeah, y'all will see it on the show. Niggas is taking niggas to court. In a minute, a bitch won't even have kids to take care of. So now, deal with that. Don't worry about me, bitch. Deal with that. I 
I'm sick of being loyal. I'm sick of being quiet. I'm sick of being everybody. Oh, I'm not a victim. I can be a bully. I could be a whole ass bully. So nigga, I had to clock in with the old me real quick to remind these niggas, to remind these bitches, watch your fucking mouth. Because I could do this all day. I got a whole accordion file in my office right now with facts on facts on facts on facts on facts. And I've been full fucking clip on a bitch. I fired off the warning shot. Take heed on. Bitch, I'll be waiting. See off. Play with me if you want to. First nigga to admit, I ain't got it all. I ain't all the way right. So if I'm a psycho, if I'm bipolar, if I'm all him, bitch, wouldn't I be the wrong person to fuck with? See, what niggas need to understand is, I don't show any fucking way. I'm here to com fulfill my contrapligations, to ruffle the feathers of the high producers or my castmates. Slip in and slip on out, bitch. Trying to do. That's it. I was trying to leave on a high note. I'm trying to, I said, I'm not at Sweet Brother Omarion's level yet. I ain't there. I don't know how to stay in a medic yet. Everybody that needed clarity, my issue has never been them, each other. It's never been on vacations together. It ain't never been none of that. Ever. My issue with you guys make stupid. You're low on morals. So be it. They don't have shit to do with me. But when my son comes home in tears, it's me. When me and AD fight, he will go to his dad's and he would cry and he would call his dad. I don't like the yelling. I don't like the cursing. Bam. So you know what? Now that I know my son is affected by my ill behavior, by the lack of self-control between me and my partner, this gotta go. And when we get back right, the first time I feel like we might be going there to your own apartment, because my son is coming home and I'm not going to have it. I love you. Love you to death. But clearly we're not in a place where we can communicate healthily. So every step I make has been to get myself together, my house in order, for my son's emotional well-being. So when he comes home and he's in tears about shit over there, when he's afraid of a, an unhealthy fear to tell his father how he really feels, when, you, when his father won't sign the consent form so we can get Cam into therapy so that he has a safe place to talk, to have a safe place to vent, then you put my back against the wall. Now, my nigga, you and your bitch can do whatever you want. But when what you do starts to affect my son, it's my business. And now you can't do whatever you want, including disrespect me. And if I'm fucking with niggas that don't know how to be respectful, I can teach you how. Question is, do you really want me to do that? Honey. All right, so you guys just got some of that piping hot, crazy, messy ass tea, okay? So this entire situation was insane. So of course it went viral this weekend. Everybody was talking about it. Folks were confronting Jess Hilarious, like how dare you talk about April behind her back? That's bogus as hell. So Jess Hilarious and April, they decided to talk about everything on Instagram Live um, yesterday. And they basically talked about it. And Jess is saying that, well, I told April that I talked about her. April already knew. I had no idea Monice was recording. I was just in my feelings at the time and all this, you know, fugazi shit. I want you guys to go ahead and watch April and uh, Jess Hilarious talk about the situation. The video is kind of long, but I want you guys to go ahead and check it out. I'm going to go ahead and break everything down. That it was going to get to the point where it was just no coming back from it. Like, oh, I got them. I got them. She could not wait till we got together for that shit. Now listen, 
I told you I talked shit about you. Cause the, yeah. You was like dismissing the fuck out of me. He was like, fuck that hoe. I don't fuck with her. She Y'all, like, you hear this? Listen to, listen to, listen to this girl. <laughs> <laughs> she a lame ass hoe. She fuck her. And my, and my best Chicago rap saying, he was like, fuck her, Joe. She bogus as hell. Yes, you were bogus, but the thing about it is the smart thing about it is, is at least you did tell me you talk shit about me, but it was interesting to hear what you said. Because yeah, half, half of that shit, more than half of that shit wasn't the truth. Didn't so that's number one. Number two, then your ass got played because she recorded your dumb ass hey, and, then, and then went live went live with it, thinking she was doing something. But see, her motive is not anyone other than me. You? And was true. Period. Wasn't so, even, bitch wasn't even. She wasn't even thinking about me. She just. That's why I be trying to. But that's why I be trying to tell people. Y'all gotta stop believing what y'all see on the internet. Y'all gotta stop. Like when someone's constantly coming on here, and the only thing that is the main goal is April and a Drew or a baby daddy. It's you're doing too much. Like, yeah, you're doing too much. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, we good. She really, she really thought it was going to be a situation. Bitch, and then let's just, like, for the record, let's just be, like, really fucking human and be like, because half these bitches on these lives talked about their motherfucking friends when they was mad at them. They just haven't been exposed. I just got exposed. I got played on it. You, you know? Yeah, but you at, least, at least you told me. I came to you, right? And I was like, all right, look, I ain't going to lie. I talk some shit about you, Monique. I I could have said I ain't say whatever well, it was. I should have said big shit because I ain't even say with magnitude of shit I talk. I was like I talk some shit, and I ain't say it was big shit, small shit. But I just was like yo shit, I talk some shit, and you was like okay bitch, bitch just talk shit, you was mad whatever. Then when I'm sitting in your motherfucking kitchen, right? Go to that live and that shit. It was my voice. I was about to snap out of that shit, and then you're like. It wasn't even like I couldn't say. That's not me. My fuck, I got the most distinctive voice in the motherfucking world. It was people like, you need to deny it. I said, nah, for what? That's, that really wouldn't be a good friend to deny it, bitch. You been, you know my voice. Everybody. No, and the reason why, the reason why, because someone said, well, why couldn't you guys call each other? I think the reason why we're doing this is just because when you have someone that's on the internet creating stories or trying to make it seem as though, you know, um, it's a certain type of way, you know, now we're living in this time where sometimes things do need to be addressed. Like Period. it just does when there's a person that's as psycho, as psycho and as crazy as yeah. that girl who's mm -hmm. going on the internet, just saying everything I'm from yeah. I'm pregnant to, I had an abortion to just saying this, that, and that about me being a mom and all these things. Anyone knows if you're around me, you get, you get, you get April, and you know who I am. Outside of that, coming to the internet every 24 seconds and saying certain things. Girl, go find you another person to go uh, stalk. Yeah. It's coming too much. Like, she really thought that she was going to be able to use you as a friend of mine to, you know, and it's like, cool, I've been there. I've talked shit about, you know, my friends. Not in the capacity that you did, but, I mean, at least you did tell me. Hey, yeah, you know, all right. Because you, you was you was you was really mad to where you were saying some really hurtful things when I, I heard you. So I was like, hold on, but it's okay because I understand who you are, so it doesn't matter. But the simple fact is, is this is why we're addressing it. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck you mean? Where I'm getting called each other? But listen, when your life is pretty much lived on the fucking internet, and me and April both. Now she's actually a little bit more out, a little, a little bit more out there to work. She's on an, an actual TV show where her life is being put at the forefront all the time. Me, I just put my life on line. Period. You know what I'm saying? So she, uh, someone said you also said she was a bad mom. Let me tell you something. <laughs> like. <laughs> She's not, bitch. And I'm not just even saying this because we made her. She's not. I was mad. Bitch, how many of y'all have said, oh, she's fucking ugly. My friend is ugly. She's dirty. She got roaches. Her kids get other clothes from other people's kids. Like, it's been worse shit that I haven't heard. Oh, whatever. Like, for real. And I'm not justified with the fuck I did. I'm a real bitch. I'm going to say I just it was fucked up. It was fucked up. <laughs> but the fact that I re really went to my friend after, after, when I... When I didn't know, I didn't even know this was going to be my friend again because who takes five months off from a friendship, April? To this day. To this motherfucking day. All you got to do is make this bitch mad. You can, you 
can step on April's foot and she won't talk to you for two weeks. That's a damn lie. What I what I won't do is deal with people that I feel like just aren't good friends. I'm a good yeah. friend. I just felt like at a point. You time, are. You're a great friend. You want to be a good friend. friend. And I'd rather less um, less negative energy in my life and more positive vibes. You know what I'm saying? So that's just kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah. You go. But I see, bitch, when you get mad at somebody, you can really get mad at them and be like, you know what? I'm going to take all the time I need to get my shit right. Because if I go back to this person, it's going to have to be worth my while. It's going to have to. What you say? <laughs> what you say? Talk- my head. No, no. While you talking, I'm like, makeup tutorial <laughs> for this day. <laughs> no, look, cause look, I'm, just, I'm, I'm sitting in front of my makeup thing. Look. Like you better do your shit. But you don't even need no makeup, bitch. Look at that. I know. I've been sitting here studying. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, let me just look like I'm awoke. Girl, you good. It's awake, but awoke. Bitch, it is not awoke. All right, so you guys just watched the video of April Jones and Jess Hilarious talking about the whole situation. And you can tell that April Jones is still kind of hurt, but she's trying to be the bigger person. Now, I'm no big fan of April Jones, um, her antics mainly, not necessarily her. I feel like her antics have been all over the place. She's trying to change her image, and I feel like she is going about it the wrong way. With that being said, I'm not feeling this situation whatsoever. One, April Jones needs to watch out. Jess Hilarious is not a real friend. And I understand she's trying to be the bigger person and she's trying to let it go and say, well, you know, Jess did tell me that she was talking about me. But it's not so much about Jess talking about you. The fact that you guys were once friends and she had no problem once the friendship was supposedly over, y'all hadn't talked in a while, running to go and talk to somebody that she knows is your enemy, somebody that she knows does not like you, for her to be that comfortable, kiki, and telling y'all's most intimate and private conversations to somebody like Monice says a lot about Jess Hilarious' character. Now, what I find funny is that Jess wants to call, you know, um, April all types of whores and go in on her and drag her lifestyle. But this is the same woman who was dating a married comedian who had like 15 damn kids, okay? been in a situation where you just rush in to find love so you jump and get married but then you find your soulmate so now you got to tell your wife and shit so you leave her get with somebody else and four months later y'all break up so now you're looking down and then you get to thinking to yourself well maybe this bitch's soul wasn't what i thought it was cracked up to be maybe that's why you should have cheated with her first you know like a test run an audition if you will you know just to see at least to get to know her soul first. She was dating Country Wayne. If anybody said anything about her being the side chick, you know what I'm saying, to Country Wayne, because Country Wayne had a whole wife. Jess Hilarious was in her feelings. She was blocking people. She was going off. And then when Country Wayne basically dumped her after using her um, for her fan base and everything else, not saying he didn't have his own, but she was a lot bigger than him. So after dumping her and going back to his wife, now the son, she don't want to talk about that chapter. But she had no problem talking about somebody else's chapter. So to me, you're no better than April. If April is being a side chick or messing with guys in relationships, you did the same thing. So, you know, pot, meat, kettle, okay? Now, initially when I was sent this story, I had thought it was a private phone call that was being recorded. But then as I got to finding out more and, you know, sat down and rewatched what Monice was saying, what it was is basically Jess Hilarious reached out to Monice and sent her all these voice memos, okay? And so Monice was cool with the voice memos, you know, and her and Jess talked back and forth. But then it's like, fast forward a few months later, and now you back who with April, and you're trying to throw me under the bus and throw shots. 
shady shady as if you weren't just dogging out your so-called friend a few months ago. So while Monique was wrong for releasing a private, you know, conversation, private voice memos, something she was sent in private, she was wrong for making it public. But I definitely understand where she was coming from because once again, they're on social media fucking with this girl and, you know, making her out to be a liar. And one thing we know about Monique is that Monique, her ass, does keep receipts, okay? Monique does not play when it comes to her damn receipts. To me, in this situation, Jess Hilarious is just a horrible person, okay? So that's what I call instant karma at its best. So while she tried to run and talk shit about April, like she's not out here fucking, you know, a married man, and like she's so much better than April, the same person she's running her mouth to turned around and just totally exposed her for the snake she is. Now, what I'm going to say to April is this. They can try and key key on the gram and try and act like, oh, it's water under a bridge. I'm kind of hurt, but it is what it is. April wants to be the bigger person. Sis, I'm going to need you to do this, okay? I'm going to need you to wake up. That girl is not your friend, okay? Because even in this conversation, they literally fell off because her and April just hadn't talked in a while. People grow apart every day, B. Hey, yo, hey, niggas get shot every day, B. You be all right, nigga. You tough, right? So because you haven't talked to me in a while, you think it's okay to go run and, you know, just literally just say whatever about me to somebody that you know is a known enemy, to somebody that you know does not fool with me, and for you to be engaged and just talking and, you know, just throwing me all the way under the bus, saying a lot of malicious shit that could get me in trouble, could get my kids taken, you're saying she's on drugs and all this stupid shit, that's not somebody that you need in your camp. That's not somebody who's a friend, okay? Because a real friend, it's one thing to vent. But the shit she was saying was straight up dirty. I didn't hear a girl who was hurt like, you know, that was my friend. I haven't talked to her. I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm so hurt. That's not what I heard. I heard somebody who basically took whatever secret you told her and ran to your enemy to tell her all your business simply because you and her were not seeing eye to eye at the time. You don't need people like that in your inner circle. The only reason why Jess Hilarious told April that she taught mess about her because she know everybody knows Monice is crazy as hell. And she probably felt like, you know what, I said a lot of shit. She knew that Monice would air it out sooner or later. With or without a recording, Monice would have put it out there. So that's why she ran to April to say, well, I was talking mess about you. But again, she didn't tell everything in honest form because she didn't tell April what she said about her. And I'm sure with her ranting and raving, she probably forgot some of the stuff that she said, especially being that this was a few months ago. At the end of the day, a real friend is not going to tell your business. You know what I'm saying? People fall off all the time. But a mature woman, whatever relationship we had at that time is between us. I don't have to run and tell your business i don't have to run and tell your deepest darkest secrets and no stupid fugazi shit like that simply because we're not talking simply because we fell off so when people run to go do that shit it shows that that person was never a friend any fucking way so to me april can be cool with jess if she wants to but me personally i wouldn't be cool with her me personally i wouldn't trust jess hilarious i would keep it very superficial with her and just deal with her with the long-handled spoon okay because that's not a real friend the shit that she was saying on that tape when she thought it was between her and monisha and enemy that's not something that somebody who had a relationship with you your family your kids would then divulge to somebody that she knows you know really has a hatred towards you so you know to me even watching that whole interaction with Jess and April it just didn't look genuine not once did um Jess Hilarious come out like she was sincerely sorry like she was sincerely apologetic you know she just seemed like she was just going with the flow she doesn't want to ruin her brand you know her and April need each other right now she doesn't want to get drugs she really went through the whole thing with the airplane situation so right now they're all trying to do damage control okay and that's what I felt watching that whole video with Jess Hilarious and April Jones that they're doing nothing more than damage control control my personal opinion um that whole situation was just shady and april needs to watch her back certain people once you see them for who they are you know what i'm saying take mental notes hi and bye keep it moving that whole situation was just shady as hell and i'm sorry we couldn't be friends after that shit keep the same energy anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation once again concerning april jones basically being blasted by her so-called friend i'm just hilarious how do you guys feel about this entire situation and do you agree with me that even though they supposedly made up that's not a real friendship because the way just hilarious went about it was just totally foul so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces